Hello, DNA analysts. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Heidi Hesrick, and today I'm gonna to walk you through the whole process of DNA gel electrophoresis, one of my very favorite things to do. And before you watch this video, you should make sure you have the handout that goes with it. This handout is down in the description of the video. I think it's best if you print it out, but if you can't print it out, just save a copy of it and fill it in electronically. I'm gonna go through step by step and tell you what information goes into this handout. And then this can be your guideline anytime you're doing DNA gel electrophoresis. Okay, our first step is to dilute our buffer. So we have a 50X TAE buffer and we want to dilute this to 1X. So we need to think about what volume of, of a gel we're going to make. If you're using the large tray, that's 60 milliliters. And if you're using the small one, that's 30. I'm going to use 60 in my example. So if you're using 30, just cut everything in half. So we are doing a 60 milliliter gel. And basically what you wanna do is just divide that by 50 um, for our buffer. And that will give you the value of buffer to add. So if you take 60 and you divide by 50, it ends up 1.2 milliliters. So first we'll measure out our 1.2 milliliters of concentrated buffer. Since we're using a micro pipette though, we're gonna do this in microliters. So 1.2 milliliters, you just multiply by a thousand to get the number of microliters. Okay, so I know that I need 1200 microliters and since my P200 is what I'm using and its top value is 200, I'm just gonna have to do this six times because six 200s will give me 1200. So six times 200 microliters. Okay, I'm going to be preparing my buffer in this 50 milliliter graduated cylinder. If you have a larger one, 100, I would do that, but I'm using what I have. I'm gonna go ahead and pipette 200 directly out of the bottle. And I'm gonna do this six times, each time putting it in my graduated cylinder. So you should see that it's filled the bottom of your cylinder to about a milliliter in height, slightly more. And now what we wanna do is add distilled water. Add distilled water until we reach 60 milliliters total. Okay, so as I mentioned, I don't have a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder, so I did 50 in this one. That also has my concentrated buffer, and I did my last 10 milliliters of water in my little graduated cylinder. So now I've mixed my concentrated buffer with my diluted buffer, and I have my 1x buffer. The buffer is to conduct electricity, but we want a gel. And in order to get a gel, we have to add this agarose, which comes from seaweed. It's kind of like gelatin, um, but vegetarian, and it's used in labs and in food. So this agarose, uh, we wanna make a 0.8% gel. And gels are usually between 0.8 and 2%. So if you're making a one or a 2% gel, just adjust your math accordingly. Now 0.8 is the same as 0 0.008 if we turn it into a decimal. We have to figure out what is 0.8% of 60. So since this is mostly water, it means 60 milliliters is gonna be about equal to 60 grams. So we're gonna treat it like this is a 60 gram gel because it pretty much is. So we're gonna take 60 grams and we're gonna multiply by 0 0.008. And that will tell us the weight of our agarose. If you math that out, it should come to 0.48 grams. That's how much of the powder we need to weigh out. So you wanna take your scale and first make sure it's set to grams if it has various modes. We don't wanna weigh in ounces. So here mine is set to grams. And then you wanna put a weigh boat on it, or I don't have a weigh boat, so I'm gonna use foil. And you wanna zero it so that it's not weighing your weigh boat or your foil or whatever you're using. Could even just be a little bit of paper. 
You're then gonna add your agarose powder carefully and slowly until you get to about 0.48. The closer you get, the slower you go. If you're off by a couple hundredths, that's fine. 0.45 is probably close enough. There we go, 0.49. Okay, that'll work. Now we take our agarose powder and carefully add it to the flask, making sure that we don't lose any. Shake all those nice little bits in. and add to flask. Do not swirl. You're gonna be tempted to swirl it to mix it. Don't do it. Now head to the microwave. You go ahead and put your flask in the microwave. You wanna microwave this on high. We're gonna microwave for one minute. If you're doing a 30 milliliter gel, I would recommend going down to 45 seconds. If you notice it start to boil, you can stop your time. So mine started to boil slightly before the one minute was over. And what you wanna do is just get this to a boil, get it to the point where it's totally clear. Okay, so check your liquid. As long as it's clear, you don't see any white flakes in it, it's good to go. That's gonna make a nice gel. And now you can swirl it. So now it's a solution. So in terms of the directions, you need to microwave. And I'm gonna say one minute on high or until bubbling and clear. So it might take 45 seconds, it might take a minute and 15 seconds. Now this is going to have to cool and we have some other tasks to do while this is cooling. These are our gel trays and you are gonna either use the smaller or the large gel tray. I'm gonna demo with each of them how to use it though. Okay, you have dams that you can put on the ends of your gel trays and this will hold the agarose in. So this is your first option. The dams are nice, but I prefer to use masking tape. The reason I like masking tape is I find it peels away from the agarose more easily. Sometimes the dam catch on the, sometimes the dams catch on the agarose and then they'll tear it away and break the gel. So if you're using masking tape, you just put it over the edges, make sure that a little bit of it is down on the bottom to fold over, and this will hold the gel in place just as well. And I find it's just easier to peel off. So you decide whether you'd rather use masking tape or dams, or your teacher may only supply one or the other. Either way, you need something on each side to hold that liquid when you pour it in. The next thing to do is to add your comb. Now, in my class, we will be making a gel that needs six wells. So this comb, you can flip it down this way to get six wells, or you can flip it this way to get eight wells. You go with the smallest number of wells that you need and you put it as close to the end as possible. I like on these Edvotech trays, they have a black line to show you where to put it, but if they don't, just go with the one that's closest to the end. When we do a seven by seven gel, we usually just add a single comb, but I'm gonna do a seven by 14, and so we're going to double comb the gel. And what this does is essentially make two little gels. So the good news is if one team messes up their gel, uh, breaks it, they then have a second set of wells, and so another team could load into their gel. It's just a backup. So what I wrote in my notes is to add the six well comb, again, you may be doing eight or 12 or 10, um, at the negative end and in the middle if you have two combs and you're making a seven by 14 gel. We're still waiting for our solution to cool. You might check it now and then, swirl it a little bit, Mine is still pretty hot though. So the next thing is to get a plastic baggie. I just use a sandwich bag and write your name or initials or your teacher might ask you to write your lab group number or something like that. So I'm doing my initials and then also date it. This is what the gel is gonna go in once it's set. 
you should also have either a brown paper bag or a piece of foil and you want to label this in the exact same way this is going to go around your plastic bag and it's going to protect your gel from the light so you want to add your initials and the date maybe your class period if I have multiple classes doing this I usually ask them to put their class period on um, to the baggie and also to the foil or the paper bag our next step is to add the cyber safe and the cyber safe is what's going to make the DNA visible on our gel so it looks like this if you are adding straight cyber safe you're gonna want six microliters for a 60 milliliter gel but this cyber safe has been diluted and because of that we're gonna add 60 microliters my students so check with your teacher on whether it's diluted or not so you know how much to add you can see my micro pipette is set to 60 and I'm just gonna pipette up and down a little bit just to make sure it's evenly mixed you should see a slight tint to the cyber safe because it has some color to it make sure to cap the cyber safe immediately so that it does not spill this is one of the most expensive reagents that we use then go ahead and put your tip down into your gel and just pipette up and down to make sure you get every last precious drop of that cyber safe out you should see your gel turn a slight pinkish orange color because of the cyber safe the rule of thumb for when to pour your gel is for when the flask is cool enough to hold comfortably in the palm of your hand and that's going to vary from person to person I think at this point mine is plenty cool enough it's still very warm but it doesn't burn me anymore you're just trying not to pour it while it's so hot that it's going to morph the plastic of your tray and when you go to pour it you can pour it in either side it doesn't matter it's going to spread out and fill the entire thing let that sit it's going to take maybe 10 minutes to solidify and now we're going to clean okay it's very important to get your flask washed out very quickly after you use it because that auger is, is going to solidify so I'm going to put a little bit of soap into my flask and then if you have a beaker brush or some kind of brush to clean it out with that'll be really helpful the graduated cylinders are easier because they just had buffer so they just need a little bit of soap and a rinse and then once everything has been rinsed thoroughly just set it somewhere upside down so it can dry so make a note to wash the flask and cylinders ASAP you can also do things like throw away your used tips and just generally clean up your area usually you don't have time the day you make a gel to use it that day and for that reason I'm going to show you guys how to store your gels so you can use them at a later date and you can store it for several days even up to a week if you keep it um, nice and moist so what we're going to do is slide the gel out of the tray into a plastic baggie you have to remove the combs my students always say is it ready is it ready well you can tell when it's not liquid anymore so if you just very gently angle it see if there's any movement or not and if there's not it's ready to go so you can see from the side this is like jello it sets very quickly less than 10 minutes gently lift the combs up and out I'm gonna leave that one in slightly longer peel the tape away or remove the dams I love how easily the tape peels away that tape can just go in the trash one drawback of tape is it does tend to stick to your gloves so your gel is delicate you want to treat this gel as though it's quite delicate the most important thing is not to bend the gel at all so lay the tray in the bag and then gently with gloves on slide the gel off the tray and into the bag push out the air and then seal your bag tightly because it is important that the gel stay very moist 
The final step is to get it into a paper bag or into foil. So lift it gently from both ends so that it stays nice and flat. Wrap it up. I usually use my gels the next day, so I just leave them sitting at room temperature. If it's going to be more than one day, put them in the fridge, and then before you run your gel electrophoresis, let it sit out for a half an hour or so to bring it to room temperature. So slide the gel out of the tray into plastic baggie, wrap in foil or in a paper bag, room temp if overnight. Fridge if longer.